Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a 2017 Fiat 124 Spider, affectionately known as the Fiat, because collaboration between the two car companies. This is largely based on the Mazda Miata, and they're more similar than different in a lot of ways. As we get to the interior, you'll see what I mean. But it is distinctly Fiat in a few ways. Most notably, rather than the two liter four cylinder from Mazda, this is powered by a 1.5 liter four cylinder turbocharged, and it's actually making more power and more torque than the Miata. It has that more classic styling. The Miata is a little bit more modern, a little bit more cutting edge. The 124 is based off of that original 124 Sport Spider from 1966 to 1974. And they did a good job, especially when you look at the front, you can see the inspiration from that original car. But I'm curious, what do you guys prefer? Do you guys prefer the Mazda Miata or the Fiat 124? Now, what you'll also notice between the two is that this is actually five and a half inches longer. We have three inches more in the front for the intercooler, because this is turbocharged, and two and a half inches in the rear. That's for cargo space. The cargo space actually is not bad at all. For a car like this, I mean, it's obviously gonna be very small, but there was a little bit more space than I was expecting, if I'm being honest. Easily fit a carry-on or two in there. I love how the owner has 124 as their license plate. This is not the Abarth, this is just the, the regular base trim, but it does have some nice creature comforts such as adaptive headlights that come standard. And although this is a fake vent, which I think is pretty funny, that is the real one right down there. Let's start the engine, pop the hood, take a look at the engine. The Fiat is up on both power and torque over the Miata. So from this 1.4 liter four cylinder, we have 164 horsepower up from 155 and 184 pound feet of torque up from 148. Now, even though this is a Miata beneath the skin, we only see Mazda's logo here, as well as here on the battery. Everywhere else, you're actually gonna see Mopar. So you see Mopar up there. On the windows, we see Mopar as well. Thank you, Stellantis. And the owner took it one step further and removed the Fiat badges and replaced them with the Mopar as well. Both front and rear. Now, with that being said, let's see how she drives. Car is pretty stock, and you'll see that this is very familiar. Familiar space because it is more or less a Miata. We have a small glove compartment right there. We have some small additional storage behind both seats with these little cubbies. The car's pretty stock. We have a six-speed automatic transmission, although you can, of course, get this in six-speed manual. They are using the NC Miata's transmission for both the automatic and manual versions because that older generation transmission can handle the additional torque from this motor, whereas the ND1 had some transmission issues, as I'm sure many of you are well aware. The interior is pretty stock. We have this little sunshade, and he added CarPlay. The car does not come standard with CarPlay. The other cool thing is actually putting this this roof down is such a piece of cake. It's that easy. And when you want to put it back up, we just go like that. Now I'm going to be driving with the roof up simply because audio, I want to make sure that you guys don't just hear wind noise. Let's get going. Now the Abarth in the automatic transmission does have paddle shifters, but this standard does not have paddle shifters. So if you want to go into manual mode, you knock this to the left and then forward for down. Um, and back for up as it should be. And for those who are wondering why is that the case, it's because when you're braking, the G's are pulling you forward and you wanna shift down, it's a lot easier to do so. And when you're accelerating, you're getting pushed back towards your, into your seat and pulling back is easier that way. Now, right off the bat, the steering in this car, I'm not a fan of. And the reason being, first of all, it's extremely light but it's twitchy and inconsistent with the weighting. So right at center, if I go a little bit right or a little bit left, the car is actually moving quite a bit, but there's no weight to it at all. And then once I push past a couple degrees, then it weights up. So you have this 
unevenness with the actual weighting of the wheel that makes it a little bit inconsistent when you first get it. I'm sure you can get used to it, but it's just not a coherent and cohesive experience with that slightly off off-center feel. And traction control is off. driven an ND Miata in over a year so if you guys do have one in the Las Vegas area please let me know I'd love to compare it to this Fiat but in terms of pickup it's it's not very dissimilar actually obviously you have a turbocharged engine which behaves a little bit differently than the naturally aspirated four-cylinder in the Miata but I have traction control off I want to see how playful this car is transmission shifts are a little bit slower than I would like as you can see it's like a half second from when I actually shift here when you see the change on the tack. You do get a bit of lag, especially below 3,500 RPM. Okay. It can get a little bit playful with the traction control off, getting the tail out a little bit. It's very slow and progressive though. Similar to a Miata, I think the Miata is, is possibly a little bit more playful, but this is also softly sprung. You can tell it doesn't have the best body control, which actually makes it, a lot of the body motions, slow motion. So it's easier to catch as a result. Yeah, it's, it's not that easy to kick that tail out, especially at these lower RPMs. Having a more immediate throttle response with a naturally aspirated engine does actually, it's quite conducive to kicking the tail out, to being a little bit more playful. And this, the, the feeling I'm getting from this car is that it's a little bit more tuned for cruising around. Whereas the Miata may be a little bit more playful on canyon roads, this seems to be the more gentle cruiser. You can hear that the owner actually added a blow-off valve aftermarket take this nice and easy yeah definitely more optimal for a gentle cruising kind of vibe rather than razor edge playful and trying to kick the tail out. Part of that is the throttle response because when you don't have the naturally aspirated sharpness it's harder to actually modulate that that edge. Yeah shifts are a little bit delayed and as you can see it, it's, it's, it's slow-mo when you're getting to that limit. Brakes are pretty squishy. There's not a lot of feel here. There's a lot of travel before you feel any of that slowing down at all. Throttle is also a bit inconsistent because of that turbo. Not the best response. Again, the vibe I'm getting from all the inputs, from the really light steering that doesn't have the greatest feedback, uh, the automatic transmission that's a little bit lazy, the squishiness of both the uh, throttle and brake, it's more of that GT comfortable cruiser. However, the seats are actually this um the side bolstering here is it starts pretty close to center and therefore it's almost forcing my shoulders to round forward which isn't very comfortable and yet it doesn't provide the most lateral grip so it, it's not as comfortable and doesn't provide as much lateral support not really the best seats that i've sat in in my opinion i'm six foot one 175 pounds on the skinnier kind of build still doesn't suit me all that well Steering wheel does not telescope out, which is not ideal because, again, if you have longer legs or you're taller, then you're gonna be reaching pretty far forward for the steering wheel. <laughs> that blah valve in a car like this is just so amusing to me. It doesn't really fit the character, but it's, it's fun, right? It's cool, it's different. This is a car where I feel like the manual transmission is still the optimal choice. I feel like for any roadster, really, you want the manual transmission, however, because this is more of that GT, slower, comfier cruiser kind of vibe to it, 
I don't think that the automatic transmission is as much of a downside as it normally would be in a similar vehicle like this. The engine sound also isn't the most charismatic or engaging. I mean, generally four cylinders aren't, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Let me know what you think of the engine sound down below. Got a little bit of wheel hop. And because the because of the turbo, it, it kind of dies off at the top end. It it doesn't really reward you to push it as hard. We have 17 inch wheels, square setup wrapped in Bridgestone Potenza 205-45R17s. And this car is actually very, it's very approachable as a car. It's, it's good for a beginner, someone who wants to get into something that is a little bit sportier and experiment with the limits or just driving a car like this a little bit beyond just puttering around town. It's very approachable and easy to learn. It's very forgiving and it's not one of those cars that's gonna be razor edge and snap at you. Good, good beginner's car. This engine is a lot comfier putting around town, lower RPMs, and less so pushing it on canyons or even at the racetrack. This is not really a car that, that is fitting based on its personality for the track. In the same way that at least a Miata is. So overall, really, you know, I think it was a a win for Fiat to be partnering up with Miata on a car like this. I think the styling is, uh, although I prefer the Miata styling, I think they did a good job with this, trying to approximate and get an inspiration from that prior generation, the, the original 1966 to 1974 124 Sport Spider. And this car is really great if you want to be different, if you want something that is very similar to Miata in a lot of ways, but it is still, at least seems to be its own thing. Turbo four cylinder, different styling, a little bit longer, and more of that GT Cruiser feel to it. Less sporty brakes and throttle, less sporty steering, less sporty transmission, at least with this automatic configuration. If you're in Vegas and you want me to review your car, then please leave a comment down below or visit our website, jabalandcars.com. Thank you for watching, my friends. Much love, and I'll see you guys in the next one.